And welcome back. Well, let's have a look at the results from the Queensland election last night. Labor won with just under 40% of the primary vote. This is up enormously from their primary vote, uh, which was in the 20s, about 26% during the federal election last year. Labor looks, set, Labor looks set to govern with a majority of 50 seats. The LNP will have around 36. The major takeouts from the election were the collapse in the One Nation vote by 6.3%. And Jackie Trad was sent packing, losing her seat to the Greens. Here's the Premier last night. We will be hitting the ground running tomorrow morning. We'll be rolling up our sleeves, getting back to work and starting on the budget. I promise Queenslanders that we will deliver a budget uh, before Christmas. And if that means working right up until Christmas, we will. I think it was a very nasty campaign. Um, and I think at the end of the day, what we've seen is um, Deb Frecklington has delivered a Green a Green member to, to the Parliament. But voters changed their minds about Labor. Why? Well, you'll have to ask the people of, of South Brisbane then. And ultimately, the result shows the power of incumbency during a crisis. Of course, when the incumbent is doing well, there's opposite situation in the US. And it shows that despite the anger from the federal government, from business groups and state premiers, Queenslanders have endorsed Labor's approach of closing the state borders. Labor commentators now say that Anastasia Palaszczuk has become a Labor legend, no longer the accidental Premier. And the question now turns to the future of Deb Frecklington. She says she will stay on as LNP leader. Now, I promise that the Liberal National Party will continue to play its part in our democracy. And I will continue to play my part in the Liberal National Party, and I will continue as the leader of this great party. Joining me now for their take is the last LNP Premier in Queensland, Campbell Newman, and Federal Queensland Senator Matt Canavan. Thank you to you both. Uh, Campbell, starting with you, Queensland turned out for Scott Morrison. So why did the LNP do so poorly last night? Well, Shari, there's a whole range of reasons, but it, it, sadly it wasn't a surprise to me because throughout this uh, three-year term, uh, we have had a primary vote that's bounced around between 35 and 37 per cent. Uh, six months ago, uh, it was clear the Premier was doing well off the back of COVID. Her numbers had improved dramatically, and that was the time to actually change tack, change the strategy and actually uh, find something that could... Uh, deal with that issue and, and, and not make it such an advantage for, for Premier Palaszczuk. Uh, but the LNP party room and the leadership didn't want to do that. Uh, they just kept doing what they were doing and well, it's like the Titanic, they ended up ri uh, riding the ship up onto the ice and now they've, you know, we've sunk. So uh, there are many other reasons, but uh, you know, frankly, not enough has been done over the three years to actually... Uh, get the narrative right to, to take this government down because they've been a terrible government and uh, also paint uh, the picture of what the LNP would do in government. Uh, I've got lots more detail we could talk about if you've got the time. We've got the time. We're going to get into it. But look, let's just start with that point. Um, you know, Matt, uh, Campbell Newman points out how Anastasia Palaszczuk's approval rating went up significantly over the pandemic. Do you think this result is mostly down to COVID-19 um, and a reflection of the fact that Queenslanders you know, agreed with the Premier's border closures and, and, and her ability to keep the virus out of the state. Look, there's no doubt, Shari, that uh, the COVID pandemic has played a big big role in this result. Uh, I think it's one of the primary reasons the One Nation vote uh, fell off uh, so much. Um, if you like, we're all Pauline Hanson now, aren't we? Because we've shut our borders, not just the state borders here in Queensland, we've shut the international borders. So there's no migration occurring at all. Uh, so it's been hard for the One Nation Party to campaign on the issues that they traditionally do. That caused a dramatic fall in their vote. And, and uh, uh, you know, I've got to congratulate Anastasia Palaszczuk and the Labor Party. They deserve congratulations on their victory. They went, they shifted right over the past year. They shifted right on borders, shifted to a conservative position on the, on the borders, uh, keeping people out. They dumped Jackie Trad, their most left-wing and hated member, especially in regional Queensland. Uh, uh, and they, they shifted on coal mining after the federal result, federal wipeout last year. So at the start of this campaign, Anastasia Palaszczuk actually did a deal with Adani uh, for royalties. So that shift uh, did allow the Labor Party, obviously, last night to capture that one nation falling vote. 
And, uh, you know, one thing I, I'll probably disagree with Campbell a bit in this interview, but one thing I agree with Campbell is that uh, the LNP probably could reflect that there was no shift in response, that we had to sort of catch up with that some way or some shape or form. I thought the campaign that the LNP ran was a, was a, was a good one, but given the COVID crisis to win, we probably needed an excellent one and uh, those sort of risks weren't taken. Would you agree with that, uh, Campbell? Do you think the LNP ran a good campaign? Look, I, I think Matt's made, by the way, some excellent points about what Labor has done to sort of mitigate any damage during election campaign. Uh, absolutely. Uh, look, I think the campaign actually run by the LNP was, was, was pretty good. Uh, I certainly uh, think that Deb Frecklington got stronger and stronger during the campaign. Her best moments were near the end. Um, but my criticism is that it was too late, that, again, we had a primary vote of 36%, say, a year ago, and that was a rig warning signal. And sadly, I think there was a fair bit of hubris in the LNP parliamentary team. They really thought this, they had this thing in the bag and there wasn't the... I didn't see the fire in the belly, the energy before the election campaign taking the fight to Labor. And, you know, COVID-19... There's a, there's a really important subtlety here. COVID-19 was a very important factor in this election, but it should not be an excuse for the LNP parliamentary team now to say we was robbed, it was all COVID-19, because in politics it is about dealing with these sort of curveballs, framing the issues and actually punching through. For example... The narrative very, very early in the piece should have been we are the best people to actually take Queensland forward uh, to rebuild the economy when this is over. I mean, people kick Winston Churchill out uh, of office immediately after World War II. He dealt with a crisis, but then they looked to other leadership, new leadership, to actually rebuild the country. Yeah, in, very interesting. Matt, I just want to get your take on a couple of things. One, the Greens statewide didn't do as well as expected, although obviously they were successful in South Brisbane with, with Jackie Trout. So comment on that. And also on the impact of Clive Palmer, uh, there has been some suggestion that this might have actually worked uh, against the LNP, um, his advertising blitz and his face up on, on billboards all over the place. What, what do you think? Look, the first point uh, uh, on the Greens, uh, they did have suffer a fall in their primary vote across every region in Queensland, as did every other minor party at this election, as we saw a rush back to the minor, major party sorry, uh, during a crisis. Uh, I do think the success the Greens had in the inner city was a consequence of what I said earlier about the Labor Party shifting right. So uh, Anastasia Palaszczuk did everything she could to capture the One Nation vote, bar dyeing her, her hair red. Uh, and that left an opening <laughs> in inner city Brisbane. Very good. <laughs> um, yeah, so that left that left. <laughs> thanks, Campbell. Um, uh, um, that left an opening in inner city Brisbane, uh, where effectively the Labor Party said, "Look, every man and woman for themselves," and they left Jackie Trout and Grace Grace and others just to fight in their own race. And and we saw the Greens vote go up. Look, obviously, also the LNP made a decision to preference the Greens above Labor. I think that will come under a lot of scrutiny. That decision. Uh, well, look, I, it was a matter for my state colleagues. All I can say as a federal member, we put the Greens last 18 months ago and I struggle to see there be any difference to that view at the next federal election. I think the Greens party, the, the, big, the greatest danger to Queensland's wealth, prosperity and future. So I always want to see them go last. Uh, now, the other question um, that you had... Clive Palmer. Uh, on, ..on Clive Palmer. Look, I don't think he had probably much influence. It's really hard to say. It's really hard to disentangle those sort of things. I think his ads probably just were a little bit... For him, just not quite as pitched as he usually does. Uh, you, you need a kernel of truth in any scare campaign, and I think the death tax stuff was just a little bit too outrageous for people. His other major campaign point was on the borders, opening the borders, and, look, you know, I, I, you know, I do think we need to hopefully put the politics out of the borders now and make some serious decisions for the future of Queensland, but there's no doubt that Queensland is a tribal and, and the border closures were popular for the government. Yeah. Campbell, just on... Um, you wrote an, uh, an opinion piece, an op-ed for The Australian back in May, and you said, uh, you know, three years... You spoke about three years of hubris by the um, LNP Parliamentary Party. You know, do you think it's this kind of attitude that's, that's led to the result last night? And do you think Deb Frecklington uh, should go as leader? Well, look, the op-ed piece I wrote on the 4th of May was designed to be as kind and constructive as I could be in the circumstances, warning of what has just happened. 
and anyone who doesn't believe me, I'm not being smart after the event. I wrote it six months ago. Go and have a look at it in the Australian and um, sort of the, the online. Uh, but what it was about was saying, look, um, there's just been there'd just been some polling at the time, which was saying, well, look, uh, uh, the polling for all the premiers is up, but gee whiz, Anastasia Palaszczuk isn't doing so well. And I thought that was wrong because Palaszczuk started the year with a net favourability of negative 15. Uh, by that polling in April, she was plus 16. Of course, she continued to rise. She was sort of plus 32, plus 33, um, probably at the moment. And so I was just saying to the LNP party room, not just the leadership, you need to do something different. You need to step on the gas. You need to get some energy. You need to talk about the economy all the time and how you're the ones to rebuild. And, and frankly, Shari... They didn't listen. And I got a, a fair bit of grief over that. They were, oh, he's having a go at us, all that sort of nonsense. I wasn't. It was about trying to actually say, watch out, um, icebergs ahead. But instead, as I said before, they kept course 250 and they ran onto the blooming ice. Mm -hmm. And it's a great pity because they've let Queenslanders down. As to what should happen now going forward, I want to leap into that. There should be a spill. It was not right or proper for Deb Frecklington last night to simply say, I will continue. What she should have said, uh, she should have said, look, there will be a leadership spill, but I want to continue to lead this party. I'm putting my hand up. I'm the best person. That's the way to do it on a night when you didn't do too well. Do you expect there will be a spill? I think, I think there should be. Uh, I, I, I don't think it's sustainable. Uh, and I'll give you another thing, and I might be wrong. I'll just, I was told today that Deb didn't step out to do a press conference. Now... You know, you want to be leader day after an election where this has happened, you've got to face the media. You, you, you want to be the leader, you've got to step out and face the media and answer the questions. You can't just sort of go and, you know, take the day off. Okay. It just doesn't work do, do that way. Do you agree with that, Matt, very so, quickly, you know, we've, before we go? Well, look, Matt, do you think I, I, she, has to, do you think she look, should look, go Campbell, now? Look, Campbell, well, look, uh, it's a matter for my stakeholders. I'm not going to buy into who, who should or shouldn't be leader to a to party room I'm not a member of. But, but I, Campbell would know better than me. My, my, my view is, at least at the federal level, after every election defeat, there's an automatic spill of positions in our party room federally, and Rob Borbidge last night confirmed that to me uh, is the usual practice at the state party room. So, look, I I'll let the state guys decide their own protocols, but uh, obviously there needs to be some deep soul-searching from uh, the LNP about what went wrong. Uh, uh, my view is that there's not a single parent for these kind of outcomes. There's got to be a level of collective responsibility across the organisation, across the party, and, of course, uh, uh, from the, the, the leadership team. Uh, the, the, the key question now is, well, what's the strategy to recover from this and go forward? And uh, uh, I think those sort of things should all be considered by, well, they will be, I'm sure, by my state colleagues when they decide who leads them going forward. OK. Matt Canavan, Campbell Newman, thank you very much. Thanks, Shari.